Anytime I make a claim, say to yourself, this is bullshit. Then remember that any claim, any assumption, and any fact is bullshit until proven otherwise. Importantly, I'm hoping you'll just say this to yourself, as if during my talk I hear every five seconds this is bullshit, my ego might take a little bit of a hit. Today I'm going to tell you about four big mistakes I've made in my life and hopefully give you some tips so you can avoid making similar ones. Why do my mistakes matter? And why is everything bullshit until proven otherwise? Well, I worked for over a decade in military intelligence and as a special agent or criminal investigator. I worked on local or tactical issues like improvised explosive devices in Afghanistan and global or strategic issues like missile chip counterproliferation in investigations as a federal agent. These days, I'm about to start a cardiac surgery residency at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles, one of the best hospitals in the country. A common roadblock I've noticed in all of these fields is that there's a huge amount of noise that confuses us and makes sorting out fact from fiction difficult. In my government career, the biggest roadblock I noticed was that my own brain would trap me into thinking the wrong thing. In the intelligence community, we call these cognitive traps. Cognitive trap is a simple term that describes exactly what your brain is doing to you, trapping you. Today, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that I can give you some tips and tricks that can help you Houdini your way out of these traps, or if you already get caught up, how to get out of them. A cognitive trap is a sort of cognitive bias, kind of a cousin to implicit bias, something you've likely heard about. Our daily lives are fraught with a huge amount of noise, things like advertising, social media bombardment, and misleading news. These things are impossible to control. Something I'd like to help you control is how your own brain may be trapping you. There are too many cognitive traps for me to succinctly cover in my talk today, but four that I think are really important to the intelligence community and also to your daily life are things like groupthink, mirror imaging, satisficing, and target fixation. Groupthink is an incredibly common cognitive trap. You may have even heard about it. I want you to picture yourself on the morning of February 24, 2022. This might have been a completely normal morning for you, but for millions of people, they'll remember this as the morning that Russia illegally invaded Ukraine. If you were listening to the news, the assessments of think tanks, or the assessments of many governments around the world, you might have thought that by the time you finished scrolling on Instagram or drinking your cup of coffee, Ukraine would have already been defeated. The idea that Ukraine could defend itself against a world power like Russia was, as a classic movie line goes, inconceivable. Now, if you fell prey to this cognitive trap, don't worry, I did too. That morning, I was texting my friends and former coworkers about how quickly I thought Ukraine would likely fall and what that would mean for the broader geopolitical landscape. Not only had I fallen prey to groupthink, but I then contributed to it by telling other people what I thought would happen. In one of the most stunning decisions in recent history, the president of Ukraine, President Zelensky, did not buy into the groupthink. And as a result, Russia has suffered a string of embarrassing defeats, and the war continues to this day. Groupthink could have been catastrophic at this large scale, but groupthink is also important to your daily life. I'm sure you can think of a time, whether it was a sports team or a time at work, where you were impacted by groupthink as well. I don't tend to make a lot of bets. In fact, I really only bet when I'm sure I can't lose. I've only lost one bet in the last 15 years. What happened? I mirror imaged. Mirror imaging is the act of casting a mirror of your own beliefs, your own worldview, the information you have, and your own goals onto someone else and ass assessing that they will make the same decisions that you make. So what happened? How did I lose this bet? I made all of those mistakes and more. The bet was a friend of mine who is a federal agent with a different agency in 2016 thought that Donald Trump would definitely win the 2016 election. I was equally certain that he would lose. I'm not going to go into the details of the bet, but ultimately it was a real bummer that I lost. I had to do a lot of reflection. My friend had made quite a few bad choices in life, like deciding to be a Buffalo Bills fan, but ultimately he beat me on this one. I wasn't the only one to make this mistake. 
pundits, politicians, and pollsters everywhere were predicting that Donald Trump would lose the 2016 election. Not only that, the Democratic Party themselves were rooting for Donald Trump to win the primary because they thought he would be easier to beat in the general election. They had made some of the same poor analyses that I had made. They had fallen prey to mirror imaging. Even when I was preparing for this talk, some of the feedback that I got was that I was mirror imaging. I was assuming that the audience would be familiar with terms or stories that I was talking about. Isn't that funny? I mirror imaged in a talk about mirror imaging. I'm sure you can think of a time where you were telling someone a story or explaining how to do something, and because you assumed that the person was following along, you got to the end of the story and you had to go back and re-explain something because they just didn't get it. Or maybe you've given someone a gift, something you really would have enjoyed getting, but the recipient didn't enjoy it. Maybe you mirror imaged. I'm going to be a heart surgeon, so I have to include a topic about heart surgery. Importantly, I'm changing a few of the details for patient privacy, but I promise I've seen similar situations that were luckily caught by excellent senior physicians. I want you to imagine yourself in the emergency department. You've got tearing chest pain, and the emergency room physicians are terrified that you're having a myocardial infarction or a heart attack. On the way to the hospital, emergency medical services already gave you a cocktail of drugs, and as soon as you got to the hospital, they hooked you up to an EKG and drew blood for a troponin. These are all great things if you're having a heart attack. But a few minutes later, your EKG comes back normal and your troponin's negative. Then a new patient shows up and they have a more acute diagnosis. You end up getting shoved into a hallway to sit in a chair and wait for a physician to be ready to see you. Except your problem, your chest pain, was caused by an aortic dissection, where a small part of the artery coming out of your heart has a tear in it. And with each heartbeat, your condition is getting worse. You might think that this is uncommon or unlikely, but an entire organization called Think Aorta was created to get people to consider the aorta as a diagnosis. And up to a third of patients who have an aortic dissection are treated for a completely different problem before they're treated for the aortic dissection. This is an example of satisficing. Satisficing is a portmanteau of satisfy and suffice. It can be great in certain situations. Finding a, situ a solution that is good enough rather than the perfect solution is sometimes awesome. In surgery, we often say great is the enemy of good. But sometimes good enough isn't good enough. Sometimes not finding the right answer can be deadly. I'm sure you can think of a time where you were working on a problem and you got to a solution and you thought it was the right one and you found out that you were dead wrong. Target fixation is another huge cognitive trap. It happens to some degree any time you get behind the wheel and have too many targets and you fixate on the wrong one. It can also happen at work when you're focused on one task and you should be focused on another one, or maybe it's something a coworker needs. You may have heard the saying, when you're a hammer, everything is a nail. This is, in a way, related to target fixation. The term actually comes from the World War era, where pilots would become so focused on a bombing run or a strafing target that they would stop paying attention to where the ground was, and then they would crash. I'd like to tell you about a time I crashed. I was in Afghanistan, and I was 20 years old. I was incredibly young and incredibly arrogant. I thought I knew everything. I was part of a joint task force, and one of my missions was to work on counter-improvised explosive device tasks. I liked working on IED missions. I was a hammer, and IEDs were my nail. One day, I made a decision that affected different parts of the country and how they could operate. This is just a normal Wednesday for me, one task and a long list related to IEDs. A few days later, though, late in the evening, I got a call from an officer at a distant base. He was not a hammer, and IEDs were not his nail. To say that he was upset with my decision would be quite the understatement. We exchanged words, and they were not the friendly words of brothers-in-arms worried about their comrades. He had a completely different mission than I did. He was not worried about IEDs in the way that I was. He was worried about what would happen because of the hindrance to his mission because of my decision. But ultimately, my brain had trapped me into being too fixated on IEDs, and I dismissed his concerns. This decision haunts me to this day. Ultimately, even though I had mitigated the IED risk, I had left plenty of people open to other risks that were just as important. 
If that officer is listening, I hope he knows that I'm sorry. I'm sure you can think of a time where you fixated on something that was the wrong thing to fixate on. Ultimately, there are too many cognitive traps for me to cover them all here. Instead, I hope to get you on the track to avoiding these traps or getting out of them if you get into them already. So how do you do that? How do you avoid these traps and how do you get out of them? Well, it isn't easy and I still regularly find myself in these traps. But I hope to give you some tips and tricks that can set you on the journey to becoming a cognitive trap escape artist. The first step you're already doing, you know that these traps exist just by listening to my talk. The second tip is always ask yourself questions. Any new fact, any new assumption, any new data has to be proven. There are some quick questions you can ask yourself for all of these situations. If you see a group assuming something and saying the same piece of information and you don't know why, find out why. Even if it's not groupthink, maybe you'll have learned something. For mirror imaging, ask yourself if you're casting a mirror of what you believe, your worldview, and the information you have onto someone else and assessing that they will act because of those things. For satisficing, always be asking yourself, are you accepting something because it's convenient and not because it's true? For target fixation, find out if you're a hammer, and if you are, what your nails are. Find out where your blind spots are and figure out how to avoid them. And ultimately, when all else fails, everything is bullshit until proven otherwise. Thank you.